Okay, uh, folks, uh, Donald Trump did a couple of pro-Israel events uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, this little video cut focuses uh, on one of them, and here he is in front of an American and Israeli flag, and he actually says the phrase, actually says the phrase, you know, a lot of people in our space sort of, you know, uh, took some shots at him. Hey, is he ever going to say make Israel great again? Is the MAGA movement really make Israel great again? Well, here's your answer, folks. Back our country, and we're going to make Israel great again, and we're going to make America great again. We're going to make them both great again, greater than ever before. There we go. Uh, here, there you go. We're going to make Israel great again, and then we'll go on to see uh, some other gems that he drops uh, in this speech here. We're going to take back our country, and we're going to make israel great again and we're going to make america great again we're going to make them both great again greater than ever before i am the best defender you've had as president by far i think there'd be no question uh, miriam mentioned four or five of the things those each individual thing oh her husband would drive me crazy you have to do this you have to do that you don't know what i had to put up with she was like the calming influence i said sheldon i can't do that it's too much he said, no, no. And every time I got something, he'd immediately start with something else, right? You just had a big victory. Let's celebrate. No, no, we have to immediately start. Let's see if we can do Golan Heights. How about Golan Heights? They've been trying to get it for 72 years. I got it done in about 15 minutes, okay? So. Even Sheldon couldn't believe that one, I'll tell you. Even Sheldon couldn't believe that one. He said, we just got gold on ice. They didn't even ask for it. I actually gave you that one, you didn't ask for it, but I thought it was important. The Democrats are bad to Israel, very bad. They'll never change because they have a section of their party now which has become amazingly and quickly very powerful, vote-wise. I mean, Chuck Schumer is a Palestinian. Who would have thought that was gonna happen? What the hell happened to him? I saw him the other day. He was dressed in one of their robes. <laughs> no. That'll be next. No, Chuck Schumer is uh, Hamas all the way. I don't know what the hell happened to him. If you support him, you're crazy. Okay. So but that I was uh, quite something so far. Now, what we just heard was, of course, nothing surprising to anyone who's been really paying any attention to who no. Donald Trump is, to who he has been. Uh, but he goes a little mob boss on the uh, Jews now, because if you notice, part of what was included in that first edit was him talking about what a great protector he is of Israel and of the Jewish people. He goes on a huge rant against the college protests in this speech as well and says outright, I am the best protector you know, you've ever had. But what does the mob do when they offer protection? There's always a catch. So here he says, hey, uh, I'm the greatest protector you've ever had if I win. If I lose, though, it'd be a shame if uh, I told people to blame it on you, meaning you Jews. Yeah. So here comes the hammer. He, he, he's going with the old stabbed in the back. Yes. Be a shame if something happened to this establishment, right? But I will put it to you very simply and gently. I really haven't been treated right but you haven't been treated right because you're putting yourself in great danger and the United States hasn't been treated right. So if I don't win this election and I've been very good, you know, they say Trump's been right about everything. I've been right about a lot of things. Even Ted will admit that I've been right about a lot of things, a lot of things that a lot of people said, no, that won't happen. But a lot of bad things happened and some good things I've been right about, too. And I only want to be so I'm not going to call this as a prediction, but in my opinion, the Jewish people would have a lot to do with a loss if I'm at 40 percent. If I'm mm -hmm. at four, think of it, that means 60 percent of voting for Kamala, who in particular is a bad Democrat. The Democrats are bad to Israel, very bad. They'll never change because they have a section of their party now, which has become amazingly and quickly very powerful. Vote. OK, so that gets into what we played earlier. But uh, he starts saying, hey. I'm, I'll be your greatest protector if I win. But if I lose, you know, uh, my base, who, let's be real, not too keen on the Jews, uh, I'm going to uh, blame it 
on the Jews if I lose. So if you're Jewish, you better suck it up and vote for me. You'd be crazy not to vote for me because I'm the greatest protector you've ever had. And if 60% of Jews vote for Kamala, as polling suggests they will, that's why he cited that, I'm only getting 40%, meaning she's getting 60, Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm going to say we lost because of the Jews. And I'm going to yep. turn my base against the Jews. So that is that is old school New York mob boss uh, talk right there. Nah, so you that's, go that, from that's just older school than that. Hey, hey, look, I'd have to check that. I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure Lucky Luciano predates uh, the the Third Reich. Does he not? That's old school. Uh, contemporaneous contemporaneous yeah yeah that that is old school so just some really despicable talk about hey i got you golan heights you didn't even ask for it i got it for you followed by a veiled threat that if the jews don't get smart and vote for me i'm going to turn my base against them and blame my defeat on them uh yeah well what's also really remarkable when you listen to this is uh people who claim that trump is independent Trump isn't owned. He's literally describing to you how he is dominated by contributors like the Adelsons. The Adelsons, yeah. How they're tired. No, I I was saying to them, it's too soon. No, they'd be pushing me. So, so what, how is he independent? Like what, what makes you think he's going to have an independence in office that he doesn't have now? Not only doesn't he have it, he's not hiding it. He's going on stage and he's telling you, now you want to say that's, refreshing in its honesty i mean i guess but this is really this election more and more as the days and weeks go by it is just the scylla and charybdis election pick your poison you you want your poison rainbow colored or you want it uh colorless and odorless and uh mayonnaise flavored because uh, right. that that's that's really all that's on the uh on the table Kim, actually, when we interviewed her, made a pretty good argument because a lot of us have been saying, well, at least it'll be better on the censorship. And she did, I think, rightly point out it's the tech companies that make those decisions. When did they really crack down? After Trump got elected. Right. Like, what makes you think all of a sudden Trump gets elected again? The people who own these companies are going to say, you know, we better back down on the censorship. What makes you think that? especially given that Trump's not going to have a unified government. I mean, almost certainly would not. So suppose he wanted to go and strike down, um, I think it's Section 240 that gives them the uh, the immunity for being uh, uh, regarded as having the responsibilities and liabilities of publishers. Uh, suppose he wanted to. You're never getting it past a Democratic House or a Democratic Senate. So really, in the end, even let, let's say he has the best intentions, he wants to go and open up free speech, which, again, statements he's made about deporting people from the country for being a year in prison for flag burning, a year in prison, would 10 give years you in no- prison for defacing a statue. That's what he said during the George Floyd protest. You draw a dick and balls on Teddy Roosevelt. It's 10 years. He didn't say dick and balls. That's my editorializing. Well, but well, that's what that's what he and, wanted. And, to that, do. and that is what is so clownish about people who are pretending that donald trump is going to be some kind of champion of civil rights it it's again it's what i've been talking about all year it's the peasant mind people want to serve somebody they want to bow to somebody they want to believe in somebody they want to feel like they're part of some movement um and this guy he's he's a he's a scumbag he's and he's not even it's not even like with obama he kind of didn't say anything so you could project onto him what you wanted to see trump's telling you right out he's no civil libertarian he's not uh of course. He, he's he's not going to end the war in gaza if that's something that you care about if anything he's going to up the arms supply to israel he's going to up the funding with the logic being this is dragging out too long. We have to finish it. We're going to give them what they need so they can finish this. And then we'll have a beautiful piece. We'll have the best piece. We'll have a piece like you never saw. It's just fucking nonsense. The guy's been in office already. Did yeah. he do the things he said he was going to do? Uh, 
did he crack down on these hedge fund managers? Where, where, where was that? Uh, we're going to have the best big, beautiful health plan. Where was that? Um, so really this is just, I, I think a lot of what's left of that. <sighs> People just don't want to feel hopeless. They want to feel like there's something that they can believe in. They want to feel like there's something they can invest in. Even though this guy, much more so than in 2016, he's really going out of his way to tell you he's not any of that. And he's not going to be any of that. Well, this is the big difference between, especially at this late stage of the campaign, <clears throat> between now and 2016. You know, um, at this point, at this point, point on the calendar late september 2016 he was on script he had steve bannon writing yep. these very populist yep. speeches about uh a certain nationalism yes but nationalism against globalism uh you know the they were pretty red-pilled speeches very well-written speeches and he had kellyanne conway in the war room strategically figuring out where they had to take their message. Right. Okay, here's right. a purple county and a purple state that Hillary is weak in and she hasn't visited. Let's go rally there. Let's go buy ads there. Like, there was a strategy. There was a precision. There was an execution. There was an ethos of the campaign. Now this guy has just been turned loose by a couple of hacks that Chris Lasidova, the smear merchant from the Swift Boat Veterans for Truth, the John Kerry smear campaign in 2004, he was the mastermind behind that. And then Wiles Willie, I forget her name, I think Barbara Wiles, who's like just a just a hack. She worked for John Huntsman, just a little like dime right, store right, Republican right, operative. Like, right. like th there, there is there is no direction of the campaign, and he is just I'm sorry, he's just a fucking incorrigible asshole. And, and and this election, like, I understand going in saying, hey, things are so dire right now because of the state of the world under Joe Biden. Joe Biden's tenure in the White House has been defined by crippling inflation, apocalyptic war and Orwellian censorship. I understand feeling like we got to throw some kind of Hail right. Mary and maybe right. Trump is right. that. But the way he has handled himself on this campaign has just been disgraceful. I am just so disgusted by the way this campaign has gone uh, on, on both sides. That's why we're not voting for either candidate. I, mean, I could go on a similar rant about Kamala Harris. I've sure. done it about a thousand we times. All right, the we time. do it all the time. All the but time. But it's just like I can't come on here and be honest with you and tell you that this is any kind of play. This guy is just no. an incorrigible no. fucking scumbag. He is an Eric Cartman all grown up. He proves that every time he opens his mouth. And this has been one of the worst, probably the worst run campaign I've ever seen in my life, considering how winnable this election was, considering how in the bag this was for Donald Trump in mid-July. He survives an assassination attempt and has the whole world on him to make a convention speech. Totally blows it, shits the bed, probably the worst political speech I've ever heard in my life. And since then, it has been one terrible decision after another after another after another they have literally not done a single thing right since mid-july not a single thing right i can't think of one uh mr trump why do you think you lost the election a o o <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And then well, what well, what's the other one? Don't you have the other one? What's the other South Park one? I have another Cartman one there too. Right? Great or is that one? Yeah. I'm going <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> yes. Followed by that. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I mean, you just gotta call a spade a spade. The guy's been absolutely fucking awful. That, that, absolutely that's it. Awful. That, that's it. That's it. I, I look, I mean, we understand that there's gold in them dar magara hills but um our our commitment to you is to tell the truth as we see it doesn't mean we're always going to be right but we're always going to be honest and honestly it's it's a total shit show and as time goes on even the well at least you'll be better on this even which we've been pretty much saying i don't even know about that at this point and no. and that doesn't mean i'm not saying well, Kamala is pulling out ahead on being better. It's just the Scylla and Charybdis. It's just, it's it's just a nightmare on both ends. Yes. Good point, Charles. Indeed. Please clap. <laughs>